and apologies people who sit in cars and talk into cameras but anyway it's quite serious it's Monday morning um, <clears throat> as expected Fox News can't deal with it they really really can't we'll deal with it we'll play this clip first because it's just pathetic uh, they're now trying to put the rumor over that uh, Biden's not alive total garbage this is what happens when you don't have plan D E F G because they were just on plan A which was that uh, Trump and co were going to roll into this election and President Biden was going to be the uh, Democratic nominee. Didn't get that one right, did you? More twists and turns to come. Caroline, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. And Fox and Friends starts right now. Bye-bye, everybody. We begin this morning with a Fox News alert. Another historic moment in the 2024 election. President Joe Biden announcing he is dropping out of the presidential race just 107 days before the election. The move comes amid all new reporting this morning that suggested Biden hesitated to drop out because his team didn't think Vice President Kamala Harris could handle taking on former President Donald Trump. But Biden giving Harris his full endorsement shortly after bowing out yesterday. Harris already pulling in more than $49 million in less than 24 hours, according to the campaign. So she's got money to run on. Meanwhile, news outlets across the country reacting to this historic moment as we see the 50-year-plus political career of Joe Biden come to a less-than-ceremonial end. There it says the end. Joe is out. Biden out. You get the message. It's all across the country. It is the biggest story of this week, and we've had a bunch of really big stories. We have live team coverage this morning. Doug Luzader is live in Washington, D.C., with how the Democratic Party is responding to the news. But we start with Jackie Heinrich, who is in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, where the president this morning is still recovering from COVID, we think, Jackie. Uh, I wouldn't even call that offensive. I just would call it um, uneducated maybe says more about the sort of person who watches uh, Fox than anything else. But uh, morning, Joan. And Joe Scarborough, as uh, well, it's public knowledge he's very close to President Biden. It's also public knowledge that uh, President Biden has been known to watch Morning Joe. And it's no surprising that uh, Joe Scarborough and the Reverend Al Sharpton just came out with the words they said, I think are spot on. I really do. Let, let me start with the second part first. When I got home last night from the studio, uh, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris called me. And the one thing that I think uh, I took away from the fact that she was planning on what her next step was going to be is that she's being very level-headed about this. She really did not know till the last minute uh, because she and I were in New Orleans at the Essence Festival together uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she was telling everybody to stick with Biden. She was very loyal. So this was unexpected to her till the last few hours. But she also was very clear she's running against someone who does not fight by the rules. This is going to be a street fight. She understands it. Uh, in many ways, uh, Joe uh, Biden is certainly a gentleman compared to Donald Trump. Donald Trump, we must remember, he went after uh, Barack Obama saying he wasn't even an American. Imagine the misogynist and racist stuff he's going to come with with Kamala Harris. And I think she's prepared for that. A week ago when I talked to President Biden and I was saying at all costs we must protect his legacy and what he began because it's not finished in terms of voting rights, women's rights and other things. He was dug in. He was going to fight to the end. And maybe it was his commitment to those principles that he said in order to best preserve that and maintain that. I'm going to step back. And I think that uh, mm -hmm. the country, Republican and Democrat, owes him a real, real, real applause because I think he showed that he has commitments bigger than himself, which is rare in politics. What he did took real courage and what he's done for this country, he should have everyone's gratitude. Mika, I'd love first to get your reaction because you obviously have, have, have strongly supported Joe Biden. You, you still believe that he would have been the best chance uh, to beat Donald Trump because he's the only one who's done it before. I'm just curious what your thoughts are this morning. Well, obviously, on many levels, I'm I'm really sad. Um, Joe Biden is a patriot. I love him. I love his family. And I love what he's done for the country. He had authenticity and touch, um, whether you, you know, saw it or not, but everything about him, even um, sometimes 
the stutter and the bumbling was uh, part of the touch, part of the sort of empathic, uh, very loving, very clear, clear eyed uh, touch that he had that allowed him and enabled him to be an effective president. Um, but all of that turned against him after the debate for all the reasons that we discussed. And he would say, no time to complain about it. Let's move on. It's go time. And Democrats really have a, a moment of momentum here. And my hope is that they grab it and run with it, get unified, get organized, get coordinated. No more infighting. Um, Donald Trump is not easy to beat. He is not easy to beat, and anyone who thinks he is is back at 2016 <laughs> when they're laughing at the concept. And you can see how quickly they tried to steal the unity narrative. Um, and I've heard from inside Republican circles and right-wing media that the hate campaign against Kamala Harris has begun, you'll notice. They purposefully pronounce her name wrong. They say Kamala. They do it all the time. It is on purpose. But the talk is to start that hate campaign and get it going and start it churning. So my hope is that major Democrats um, and major Republicans, from the Obamas to the Bush family to military leaders, get behind the democracy ticket and we move on. And uh, throughout the show today, we'll see, Willie, if um, leading Democrats uh, are going to get on board with Kamala Harris. Uh, we'll be hearing from some for the first time and seeing if there are some endorsements this morning. So I'm sure you, where were you when you heard the news yesterday? I got a message from somebody who knows an awful lot more about what's going on in American politics than I can even begin to imagine. And um, they also called me today. I can't take credit for it. I should really, because you wouldn't know any difference. But they called me today and said, in their opinion, this is something to watch out for in the next seven days. You want to know what the weather's like, by the way? Sorry. Forecast where I am is rain, but the forecast politically, staying on the narrative, uh, they are predicting, this is what they think will happen, is that uh, Biden within the next seven days will actually resign from the presidency and uh, Kamala Harris will assume, you know, will assume the presidency uh, leading into the November 5th election. Well, we, we are right now as we speak, 14 weeks, six days from November the 5th. And as I said, my friend who knows a lot more about it than I do, he predicts, do you like how I say it somebody else, just in case it doesn't happen, I've got to keep the credibility. But anyway, being serious, he predicts that uh, Kamala Harris will become president because President Biden will pass the baton on to her by resigning from the presidency within the coming days. We shall see. Hey, machine. Son of a toy. He's sending Mark back in time. For the last five years, billionaires, not working families. Now, he's trapped in the past. 300,000 jobs in a And only Dr. Brown can help him get back to the future. What the? Remember who we are. We're the United States of America.